Hey guys, we're back in the lab again, and this is going to be the third part of my uh, How I Grow Mushroom series. This part is going to be all about colonisation, like the colonisation stage, um, and what you know, what to look out for, what to expect, how long it's going to take, you know, the kinds of temperatures you need to keep it at. Um. So a little bit about the incubator, um, which is what I call uh, this side of the of the shipping container that we're in. Um, I have the entire thing insulated with um, like 75 mil. Um, insulation boards it's like it's like the equivalent of um, like the Celotex stuff um, but I mean Quintherm uh, that is one of one of the boards that I use I actually um, I actually bought them f uh, as seconds uh, there's a company in Wales that sells uh, like re reclaimed insulation boards uh, ended up costing about half the price as it would to buy them new um, and it's a surprising amount to do this entire thing we've done the ceiling the walls the floor the door um, you know, and it, and it works really, really well. We've got this little radiator down here. Um, you can see that, yeah. You know, that just has to pop on for you know a couple of minutes every every half an hour, something like that. It, you know, it's it's really not a lot. It keeps the heating really well. I've got my temperatures set at twenty three point five in here. Um, I think that's. It's, I mean, I know for a fact it's definitely too warm for my Inoki. Uh, I feel like it's too warm for my Blue Oyster as well because they seem to be struggling a little bit also. Um, King Oyster seems to do great, Lion's Mane seems to do great, um, I mean Shimeji seems to be doing good as well. So you know it's, it's, it's all about finding a compromise with the temperature I think unless you can have different incubators you know like in an ideal world I'd have a, a, I'd have a colder incubator and a warmer incubator, I'd have two separate ones. Um, I, think you could, I think you could have a wide variety of strains with just, with just the, two, the, the two separate ones. So the way I do it in here, I've got my jars set up at the top, um, but we'll talk about them in a different video. Uh, this is my spawn, uh, which I showed you a little bit of in the last video. And this is where, the, on all the other racks, this is where we keep our bulk substrate, our inoculated bulk substrate. So once the blocks have been inoculated, they get loaded onto these, um, they get loaded onto these racks and it's just a case of, of waiting for them to colonise really. Um, you know, the, the, the times differ depending on the strain, but you know, sometimes some of, my, uh, some of my oyster, some of my oyster blocks like the, these blues here, um, they, you know, this, this was done on the 9th, um, what are we now, 21st, so this is 12 days, this is 12 days to get to that, it's actually quite slow um, for me, I, I usually get them to colonise quite a bit faster than that. Um, so the batch that we did on Sunday, I've got down on this bottom shelf here. Um, it's been today is Tuesday, so it was inoculated on Sunday afternoon, and today is Tuesday morning. Um, so you can see on these kings, hopefully, it's started to uh, started to blast off. This one here, definitely, you can see all those little inoculation points spread out throughout the substrate. Um, we've got the ones that were noted, so this is one of the ones with the flow hood off. So we'll keep an eye on this one to see if it, um, see if it contaminates. Here we've got the test bag that we were talking about, the one that we didn't shake. It's literally just got the, uh, got the substrate on the top. Um, you can't, probably can't see it there the way the, way the light is, but um, so Anoki I've found colonizes really quickly. But you can see, you can probably see there just about that the top half, it's quite thin and wispy, but I think you can just about make it out. The top half is fully colonised and the bottom half hasn't colonised at all yet. So that's quite good vigorous growth in from the top, but it could take two weeks or more for it to get all the way down into those corners from there. By which time, if there were any spores that survived the uh, sterilisation process down in this corner, they would have time to germinate and establish themselves in the corner rendering the block useless. We'll keep an eye on it, um, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I mean, Enoki seems like very tenacious mycelium, so it might just get on a right old mission and um, colonise the bag anyway. Um, but you can see over here, this one, two days, and this one's already started as well, started to blast off. Um, very happy, very happy with that. Uh, the lion's mane, the lion's mane you won't be able to see as well again because lion's mane is much 
thin and wish it has much thin and wispy in mycelium. Now I, d I didn't realise this with the first lines main blocks that I did, um, and I was waiting and expecting to see extremely thick mycelium like you, like you see with the uh, oyster mushrooms. It doesn't go that way, um, and sometimes it will look like it's not it's not growing at all, and then two days later it's just crazy and it's fruiting. So. Um, you know, lines main can be a little bit tricky, uh, but just bear that in mind. If it, you know, if it doesn't look like it's colonising, just just give it a few more days, and um, you'll you'll see it. It's 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 very tenacious, as, as with all of the other the wood lovers that we grow here, and uh, it's really uh, it's really hard to stop it from growing, actually. So just just be patient and bear with it, and um, and it'll 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 grow through eventually. So as I say, uh, I'm going to keep coming back uh, every couple of days and update. You know, just keep filming some updates with the uh, with how these bags are coming along, and um, you know, we can stitch it all together into one video. So um, yes, I will see you in the future. So welcome to the future. We are now a few days ahead in time, and as you can see down here, our uh, king oyster mycelium is starting to come on nicely. You can see it growing from all the different points throughout the bag. Um, Lovely, lovely stuff. It's doing really well. Uh, here's the whole batch. You can see it's all very, very uniform. Same story with all the all the bags. Um, Colonising very nicely. Very happy. Uh, we've got lion's mane here. You have to excuse. We've got a bit of condensation on the bag, but um, hopefully you can see that. It's just it's very wispy. In in, in person you can see it, um, but there it goes. We've got the anoke as well, which seems to have gone crazy. Wow, yeah, look at that already. That's what, so it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, five days in, and uh, yeah, that's crazy. So there we go. Um, I'll come back in a few days time and uh, show you where we're at. Today is Sunday 26th, and we are seven days on from the last video where we inoculated the batch. Uh, everything's going really well, and everything's colonizing exactly as it should be, which is awesome. I usually expect my bags to colonise in 10 days to two weeks, like 10 to 14 days, uh, depending on what the strain is. Um, I'm finding that shimmerji tends to take a lot longer than that, but um, you know, I still haven't managed to make that fruit, so we'll, we'll see about that one. The experiment that we did where we uh, had two bags of enoki side by side, one that was shaken and one that wasn't shaken, I think has gone really well. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring the camera over so you can see. Uh, you can see the bag on the left here was the one, one, one of the ones that we'd shaken. Let's just make sure we can see here, yeah. This one had been shaken thoroughly, as you can see. It's uh, colonising very nicely, doing very good. Turn it around. I mean, there's, you know, there are some dry spots, but, you know, it's going to make it, you know, not too far away. Uh, here's the one that we didn't shake for comparison. Bearing in mind that this one looked more promising than this one to begin with. For the first few days, you would have put your money on this one being the fastest to finish. But you see, all the way around, we've got, and it's all on the bottom as well, there's just nothing. It's going to take another week, maybe two weeks for that to get down there, whereas this one, you know, this one will be ready half that time. So that's the uh, the benefits of shaking your bags there. I'm, I'm, glad, that, I'm glad that one's worked out. Uh, can come down and see... We've got our kings that we inoculated, which are looking great. This is actually nice and fast, the kings. I'm, I'm very happy with how these are coming through. So uh, another thing I should probably talk about is um, contamination. Now, um, at seven days, it's you know the, you, you, when you get out this far, this is a chance where you might you know you might start seeing it. Um, you know, and when, and when you're looking at your blocks, I mean, you know, thankfully n none of these have actually contaminated. But um, you know, when you're looking at your blocks, you just want to look usually at the places where. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, you know, I'm just looking at this bag, and would you believe it? Look what we've actually found. Um, we've got a little bit, a little bit of a, a green mold in the bag. Now, so like I was saying, you know, seven days out is a good time to start looking for contamination. You want to have a look around on your bags, and and check check the parts where where it hasn't colonised yet, because that's a likely place. I mean, here it's you know, I say that. Here it's colonised. You know, the, you can see the mould right next to uh, right next to where the mycelium is. So that's not always true, but um, you know, this is what you want to look out for. Now, I think, you know, the reason why I think this this must have been one of the ones that I inoculated with the flow hood off. So again, I, I think you know that that's a perfect demonstration of 
you know why you should use a flow hood. Unfortunately, with these uh, with these Anoka, I actually didn't mark which ones were done with the flow hood. I actually forgot to do that. So I'm 99% I'm sure though that this is, this is one of the ones that um, that that you know that, that was inoculated with the flow hood off because I don't usually see that. This is you know this is the first time I've seen contamination on a on a good on a good sealed bag in 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 quite a long time. So. So I do have I do have this uh, bag of kings here that was um, that was inoculated uh, without the flow hood running. So I mean, you know we can have a look at this and investigate. We can have a look for contamination. Have a look for signs of contamination because there's a good chance if that one contaminated, then there's a good chance this one might have as well. Especially since we know we know that the flow hood was off for this one. But, um, this one looks fine. I can't see anything on there, but I will I will definitely keep an eye on that over the next few days. And, and by the way, this should go without saying, but um, you know, you definitely want to clean your hands, you know, before you come in here and, and do this. Um, you know, you probably even want to wear gloves. But again, like I say, I'm trying to conserve on the on the gloves at the moment. So, yes, yeah, so unfortunately, I, I did only mark um, one of the bags uh, that had the flow hood off. Um, there were four, four or five, I think, I did with the flow hood off. Um, I'm sure that this this Inoki bag was one of the ones that I did with the flow hood off because we're seeing this contamination here, um, but. You know, like like I said, I think this is a you know a really good demonstration actually of, of um, you know how the flow hood is working because um, there's a good chance you know what what has happened is I've walked into the lab and I've been outside you know I live I live next to a farm so there's all sorts of stuff floating around in the air you know there's nothing nothing I can do about it but you know I wear fresh clothes I come in clean hands wear gloves take the proper precautions the flow hood usually is enough to prevent these spores that I'm bringing in from landing on the on the cultures one of the things that you can do is actually create and I haven't done that I haven't done this in here yet but you can create a positive pressure environment inside where you and I'm going to set this up soon actually where the HEPA filter basically we, we pull air, oh, currently I've just got it set to scrub the air inside so there's no air coming from outside it's just it's just scrubbing the air on the inside which works well but what would be better is if it's pulling air from outside and pushing it through the filter into the room so that basically it creates a positive air pressure inside inside your incubator so when you open the door that the air starts to rush out of the door right um, and that means that any you know any sort of because there will be spores floating around just there outside the door so when you open the door it pushes them all out so as you walk through you you know it, it at least pushes the air uh, like around you as you as you walk through the door and then likewise when you approach when you approach the um, the workstation there, um, you know any any anything that might be trailing along with you also gets blown back back this way. So that's going to be a nice improvement, and you know that'll stop that'll stop this from happening. But um, you know I'm guess I, I'm you know I'm really glad that that happened on camera actually. Um, you know obviously at first I thought it was like whoops you know I'm showing a, a mistake there on, online or whatever. But um, you know that's what this is all about. I'm I really am serious about. You know, sharing everything, you know, warts and all. I think, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a good thing to do. So, yeah, um, that's a good example of why, you know, why you want to um, use your flow hood and, and follow sterile procedure and all these things. Now, it's only a little bit. It is only a little bit. We might, might get away with this, but generally, I'll, I'm gonna, I will get rid of this because having spores like this in the lab, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not good. If any of this stuff manages to, you know, to germinate on the wood, if it, you know, I mean, it's a very dry in here, but you know, if there were any damp spots or anything, um, you know, it's just you just don't want it. You just don't want it. So, okay, so this is the last day of um, incubation and colonization. Uh, well, at least it is for some of the bags. Um, the the kings and some of the Anokis have got a few more days to go, but um, I need to wrap up this video. So, um, the lion's mane are finished and ready to go. So I'm going to get them onto this trolley out here we're going to go and get them into the new and improved fruiting room which is very exciting um, there's a couple of a couple of interesting things that have happened um, I think you as you saw in the last edit from um, which was shot a few days ago there was some contamination in some of the bags so that has uh, progressed onwards uh, so I wanted to show uh, a little bit of that so I'm shooting this separately um, we're just going to cut in now so as I said Here's the dreaded green trichoderma mold. No, uh, as you can see, it's uh, thoroughly 
taken taken hold on this uh, on this side here. And here's a really good example of uh, of why shaking is is very important as well. Um, this is an area where you can see there there is healthy mycelium. It's established itself and it can hold its own when it's here. Just here though, you've got trichoderma mold, which has established its own part. So that will prevent the mycelium from colonizing this part of the bag. And uh, if I open this now, trichoderma mold spores would just fly out into the lab, which is a terrible, terrible thing to have happen. On this one, you can also see, I mean, it's an oaky, so it's, um, it does throw a bit of a fit about the, the warmer temperatures in here, but you can see metabolites, you know, it just looks fairly stressed. It's using a lot of its energy to, um, to fight off this green mold, but still, it's pretty cool to see really, you know, it's um, biological warfare happening on a microscopic scale. This is nature. You know, it's, uh, it's quite, quite spectacular really when you think about it. We also have the experiment that we did where we did no shake, which is this one, and we did a bag that was shaken, which was this one here. And this one is fully colonized, as you can see. So I'm glad that worked out so well. I think that demonstrates really well the, uh, the difference that you get when you uh, don't shake and when you shake. So, nice one. Okay, so down here we've got our fully colonized lion's manes. They've actually started fruiting in the bag. I should have really fruited these a couple of days ago, um, but I've been so busy turning the uh, turning the fruiting room rounds and upgrading the racking. I haven't had a chance to uh, to do this yet. So, um, so I'm going to just start putting these onto the racking here. I think we've got what was it? I think it was like nine or ten lines main. Was it ten? Ten lines main. Yes, yeah, ten lines main. Okay. Uh, so while we're down here as well, you can see the kings. Let's bring it in the light. Uh, this, this one's looking really good actually. That one's actually uh, not, not far off. I would leave it a couple of days just to consolidate. I do actually like to start to see king uh, pins on kings. You can just see very tiny. I think, oh there are maybe. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Uh, just very tiny uh, little pins for me. So I think I shall fruit this one. I'll give it another night and then fruit it tomorrow. Um, they're looking all good though. So we'll finish off getting these lines made on the rack and they shall go off into the fruiting room. And so that's really that for colonization and incubation. And we'll be taking these into the new and improved fruiting room, which I will start shooting. I don't know if I'm gonna do it with these exact bags. Um, I will try, because it would be nice to go, go through the process with like the same bags throughout the, throughout the whole series. But as always, if you've got any questions, you know, get in touch. There's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to uh, mushroom cultivation. And if you've stayed with me this far, thank you so much. I know, I know these videos are a bit long. Um, if you've managed to sit through this entire thing, then you, know, you must be very keen to get going with this. And trust me, I was in your position. Um, basically, like this time last year, I was sat at home watching YouTube videos, thinking, oh my God, I would love to start a mushroom farm. You know, I watched every single thing I could find on the internet and learned as much as I possibly could about how to operate a commercial mushroom farm. And a year later, here I am. Um, and I'm so passionate about the fact that I, I learned how to do all of this from YouTube. Um, and I just, you know, I owe, I owe everything that you see here to, you know, the educators out there online who are so generous with their time. And, uh, you know, just, they just give all the information away for free. So that's the spirit that I'm making these videos in. And you know, I hope, I really hope it's helping some people. Like I've, like I've said a million times, especially in the UK, um, I hope there's you know a bit of UK specific information. Um, you know, and I'm enjoying making these. It's getting easier and easier every time. I've got quite a nice workflow, so um, you know, I look forward to sharing more of this with you and making more of these videos. And I'm going to say it for the first time because it does help. If you could like and subscribe, that would be very helpful and a, a way of showing support for what I'm doing and an indication that I should make more. You know, it's a bit cheesy, a bit of a cliche YouTuber thing to say, but you know, it's a cliche for a reason um, and it does, it does, it does help. Um, exciting news, I'm gonna be launching, or well, I already have launched this live, but I'm, I haven't started promoting it yet, but I'm launching a website where I'm gonna be selling fresh mushrooms, dried mushrooms, um, few other exciting products in the pipeline as well uh, but we're also going to be selling uh, blocks that you can grow at home um, 
I kind of want to aim this more towards cultivators, like home cultivators, who are um, you know maybe buying four blocks at once, so there can be like a bit of a saving. Um, but there's also another really exciting thing on the horizon. It's a collaboration with one of my good friends. But I shall save that for a future video. Um, so thanks again, guys. Uh, you know I love and appreciate you all, and I shall see you on the next one. Ciao.